picture this. You're a person that loves wristwatches, particularly the automatic ones for whatever reason. Perhaps you love the idea of a tiny machine that runs itself with a minimum interaction from you, as in all you have to do is wear it. Or maybe you're just someone that wants to slow down and disconnect from the ever-present buzzing and blinking devices of our times. Whatever your reasons, you're now in a situation where you want to buy a beautiful, well-made wristwatch. Sure, if you gave up many, many other things for a year or two, you could buy yourself a timepiece that costs the same as a small car. But if your love is genuine and you are willing to forego the buzz of a large brand, you might also consider the so-called micro-brands. When you first start out, it can be difficult to navigate the jungle of lesser-known micro-brands, and to be honest, it can be no less annoying than some of the large brands to actually source one when you do find that perfect watch for you, since they are often limited runs and have a fair bit of hype attached. One such brand is Zelos. You could argue that they have an immense amount of hype attached, and it's one of the few micro-brands you could actually speculate on, since some of their most innovative designs sell out in minutes. This is the first one that I bought, and that's after reading and watching hours of reviews, all praising the build quality and fun approach to experimenting with colors, cases, movements, dials, and loom. In today's video, I'm hoping to help you answer the question, can a micro brand really stand up to watches costing 10 times more? My first Zelos watch is this Spearfish. It was my first choice since it has some unusual but not too out there materials, a brilliant movement, it's not too big, and importantly, I managed to buy it without staying up to 2am and getting stressed out about having 5 minutes only to buy what I wanted. Whilst it is sold out now, it was available for a couple of weeks after release. So let's have a look at this dial first. There are a lot of brands that adopted a so-called forged carbon as the next big thing after titanium. Whilst it's strong and lightweight and therefore very suitable to sports cars, carbon fibre also develops an almost marble-like texture when the fibres are forged into random patterns. It's that aspect that has clearly put it on the radar of watchmakers around the world, including Zenith and Tag to name a few. As you can see, the light play under direct light is remarkable. But what is equally noticeable is that this watch looks normal. It's not too out there, just a tiny bit of extra texture when you look down on the watch on your wrist. I really like it and I'm curious to see if Celos will try next time to mix in some loom, like the amazing Zenith El Primero Carl Cox watch released a few years ago. The indices are all applied with tasteful double battens at 12. The Celos logo is a polished bit of what I assume is steel underneath. The only print you'll find is Spearfish and the water resistance above 6, and that part is in the same orange that's used in other parts of the watch. Special shout out for the font in use. It feels modern and I like it. The slender seconds hand is another orange highlight and have blue loom on its tip that despite being quite thin, holds its own when the lights go out. The Zelos signature minute hand design is on full display here. From a distance, both reflections and loom makes it easy to tell the time, and the added texture of unique design elements on the minute hand is only visible when you get a bit closer. I love this approach. It's designed for you, the owner, rather than a casual onlooker. Lastly on the dial, we have a color match date wheel that shares the space with a half indice at the sixth position. For me, it's too small and I could do without it, but it's also inobtrusive, so I won't complain about it for once. Covering all this is a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the inside. It's very good and has no blue or purple tints. It sits flush with the ceramic bezel, which matches the look of the dial material. And this is where we can find the final bit of matching orange in the form of an orange triangle at the zero position, with a small loom pip housed within. 
all numbers and bars are loomed. And whilst I did notice a few minute droplets of loom left around the print, they came off easily with a quick brush, but it's worth noting. So this is the model with a unidirectional dive vessel. There were spearfish models with a 1 to 12 markings that would have made it easier to track a separate time zone, and they also had a bidirectional vessel. But this one has the notoriously solid and impressive feel of the Celos dive vessel. It very much reminds me of a certain Sin ACM5 watch that I owned, but without the kickback backplay of that model. It's very good. The crown is signed, well protected and grippy. Winding this excellent movement is absolutely effortless. So that takes us to this case. For me, it's the perfect size of 40mm diameter, not including the crown, 47mm lug to lug, and a thickness of 11.5mm. It has plenty of interesting angles with brushed and polished lines. We're not talking Grand Seiko like extreme mirror polishing, but rather enough to catch the light and break up the brush bits. The dramatically downturned lugs, in combination with the female endlings on the bracelet, not only makes this case look really, really good, but should also fit wrists of all sizes, not just my slightly above average 19cm wrist. In the microbrown world, we usually find Japanese movements that are reliable, but not that exciting to look at, so often covered by a solid case back. This one has something completely different, which is why we find a sapphire case back showing off a choice that's slightly more exciting to behold. The La Joux Perret is a prestigious Swiss watch movement company, and this G100 is designed to be a drop-in replacement of the ETA 2824, which is harder to source these days. It offers an impressive power reserve of 68 hours, and its 28,800 beats per hour gives you a beautiful sweep of the hand. It's also been decorated with a gunmetal finish on both the base plate and tungsten rotor. There's an interesting walkthrough of this movement on an article referenced on Celo's website if you want to know more. I'll drop it in the description of this video. The bracelet is worth going into detail about for a few reasons. Much like the entire watch, it's been harder to 1200 Vickers, which will not make it impervious to scratches, but it's around 3 to 4 times harder than your average steel so it will certainly help keep your watch pristine for years to come. The bracelet itself is absolutely brilliant, one of the best. The individual links combination, being brushed and polished, looks fantastic on the wrist. It fully follows the movement of your daily moves and tapers down to 18mm at the clasp. The screw links makes it easy to adjust yourself and you should be able to get that perfect fit. Another great feature is quick release spring bars, so when, if you want to put this on your favourite NATO or leather strap, that'll take seconds rather than minutes. The push button release clasp took a bit of breaking in and it got a little caught the first dozen or so open release cycles. And here lies my only small issue. There is a quick adjust system, but it is very fiddly to return to position. If it wasn't for the brilliant Hallios buckle, I'd not know any better. But this is not an elegant enough solution for such an excellent bracelet and clasp. It might loosen up with more frequent use, but in daily use, this would annoy me a little. Finally, the loom. Celos are known for this, and it's extremely good. A tiny bit of light is all that's needed to charge up the C3X1 loom. The blue tip of the seconds hand is a fun detail. I've heard both Celos and Halios describe more than once as the Rolex of the microbrand world. Often more in relation to sourcing one, but also quality wise. These are very well made watches 
we'd have found that are similarly protective of their brand's supply and demand and obsessed by quality. Sure, sometimes the odd watch is received with an issue or two, but if that happens, you'll hear from the owner directly and you should find the customer service being second to none. That's certainly been my experience dealing extensively with both brands as a normal customer. The Zelos Beerfish is excellent value for money, with specs and quality rivaling the big brands. I hate saying this, but I'll probably be up at 2am for the next big release, and maybe you will too after this. Rest assured, it is worth the disrupted sleep. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.